perhaps we can start uh, just giving a brief introduction and history of Vailant um, and how you uh, developed the, this system. Yeah, uh, Vailant is, is one of the um, heating companies which has developed uh, micro CHP fuel cells a long time ago. We already started in uh, 1998. Uh, with the question, can we use fuel cells also for domestic application in, in, in households, one and two family homes? Uh, the answer at that time was yes, and then we totally underestimated the efforts which are necessary to really get to a product. Um, so we demonstrated different fuel cell technologies. We have uh, a lot of experiences with uh, nearly all interesting micro CHP technologies. Uh, we had a cooperation in the former times with Spark Power in the US uh, based on low temperature PEM. We had a cooperation with other companies um, in Germany but also in, uh, in European countries on high temperature PEM and then we decided in 2008 to concentrate everything on SOFC, the uh, solid oxide fuel cell, as we think that this is a technology which uh, has the biggest potential to yeah, cover all the market demands. So in terms of uh, the system, uh, how can the average um, indiv individual and average home benefit from using the system within their, their household and how does it work? Yeah, the, the principle is, is very simple in, in general, I would say, not in detail, but in general. We have a um, CHP system that means we provide heat and power in one and the same appliance. This is based on the existing um, principle of micro CHP which you can already buy in the market based on Sterling engines or internal combustion engines as our EcoPower 1 or EcoPower 3 and 5 kilowatt systems. Weiland is one of the market leaders in, in micro CHP in conventional technologies. We have a product range up to 20 kilowatts at the moment which is more the business demand than but for the one and two single family homes um, we have the one and even the three kilowatt system uh, within our um, product portfolio. Um, fuel cells, um, we would say always this is the technology for micro CHP of the future because it's the most efficient way uh, to provide power and heat in one and the same appliance. So in terms of your, your company, you're talking about uh, demonst your problem demonstration. So in terms of uh, the commercialization, what is your stage? Are you more on the de development stages at the moment? And uh, if yeah. so, what, which projects are you involved in right now? What are you, what are you doing in terms of pro uh, project, demonstration projects? So we have a, um, as I said previous uh, sentence, I, um, we uh, can base our experiences on the long term of even uh, lab testing but also demonstration. Um, we are now in a very interesting phase um, which we call large scale demonstration. Uh, we are um, within Calux, this is the big field trial in Germany with um, an installation of 100 systems in that year of our newest generation which we have presented at the Hanover Fair here in the Initiative Fuel Cells. Um, this is the Generation 5 uh, we developed based on SOFC together with our partner Saxera, Sunfire in Dresden. We um, will install, as I said, 100 further systems in Calux and we are currently developing further field trials, large-scale demonstration, not only in Germany but also in uh, countries as uh, Austria, France, uh, Italy, Spain. So we will extend now in the next phase the volumes in the market in a pre-series. It's not a serious product. We are still in a pre-development and technology development phase, but you need a large-scale demonstration in order to decrease costs. This is one of the most important issues. So in terms of these development projects, um, that is in, sense, in, in essence saying that uh, uh, members of the public currently have these systems installed in their households as part of the demonstration project. So in terms of our public audience here, if they were interested in having these units within their home, is it feasible and possible for them to participate in these demonstration projects? Um, if so, how do they do that and what are the prerequisites in order to have these units in, in, uh, installed into their home? Uh, the answer is yes. When we, um, as a complete industry, I would say, we are now in a, in a different situation than in the previous years. We have um, the big Calux project, which uh, is more or less organized by big utilities, helping us uh, in the last years to provide the technology to get really volumes in big demonstration projects like in Germany with the Calux program, funded by the National Innovation Program for Hydrogen and Fuel Cells. 
um, at the moment we have um, developed um, together with other partners, with 26 other partners in Europe, the big European field trial program, uh, Creative Field, which we have yesterday, an uh, interesting podium uh, discussion here uh, at the Hanover Fair on that stage. Um, which enables now to extend and expand the volumes in um, European countries and member states, but also to involve end users, um, I would say interesting installers, uh, utilities, uh, but also local utilities and municipalities uh, in the city. So um, the possibility to involve further stakeholders in the demonstration is increasing and that helps us to get the volumes up. So, your question was, is it possible for an end-user to participate? The answer is yes, they can. Um, important is that this is a, 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 yeah, already or still a uh, feed trial, so we have a defined uh, demonstration phase, more or less three to five years at maximum, and then the system will be replaced, for example, as a serial product or with an, another product which the customer wish to have after the end of the feed trial. But in general, it's possible to participate. Uh, you were talking about earlier, um, in terms of uh, entering the market, you're still in the stage of development, there, there's an issue of the cost. Um, so for, for these to be on the marketplace and uh, readily available for the public use, what is needed um, in terms of incentives and who else needs to be involved? You kind of touched on it a little bit, saying, you know, uh, other stakeholders. Can you go into a little further detail as to what incentives you would like to see to bring these to the market? Yeah. Yeah, first of all, we have to say that the responsibility to decrease costs is at first on the manufacturer side. So we we have to ensure that the customer will get the quality and the price level they expect in the market with Dutch products. And products. Um, for example, we decreased the costs um, from the generation 4 to the presented generation 5, which we have on the booth here, by 50%, 5 -0. So half of the costs were taken out still to simplify the product. That is the part of the digression of the care costs, um, which we call design to cost. Simple product, leave components away, make it more integrated, something like that. Um, so this is the first responsibility. We have the funding um, contribution from the European Commission by the Summit Fragment Program, JTI, within Enefield, which is very, very helpful to in enable the um, yeah, field trial partners, utilities, but even end customers, installers, um, to become a cost level or to get it to a cost level which is really, I would say, interesting to participate. Because you cannot expect that a customer pays a lot of money, a lot of more money, than he's willing to expect for a normal product which you can buy in the market today. This is the second thing. The third thing I think we need still even a little, but we need a contribution from a utility or a municipality uh, in the local city of the installation. Um, this can not, could, could also be something like an, a special price for the natural gas. It's not always to be an incentive for a, um, investment funding, but um, to give something like a low, low cost offer for a natural gas for the customer is also interesting because this is the key business of, of, of the utilities. Um, the challenge at the moment I see for the complete industry, not only for Milan, is to get to, through this, which you call sometimes death valley. So that means we have high cost, low volumes, and we need low volumes at high cost. This is a normal thing for all innovative technologies, not only for fuel cells. And the more player we have, which helps to, got, to go through this interesting but I would say final stage before we enter the market with this interesting product, the better we can, um, yeah, I would say conclude um, the story of especially German manufacturers when we're looking on who is providing products on micro-CHP fuel cells. Most of the manufacturers are located in Germany. We have Fisman, we have even BDR with this uh, Baxino Tech in Hamburg, we have uh, Bosch here, we have Weiland here, uh, we have Hexis. Uh, so, the key players of those interesting roads are allocated in Germany, but we have to be careful that we go, I would say, the last mile of the marathon race um, together with the players, and we are already in a cost level which is really interesting. We are not talking about incredible amounts of money which we need for a for demonstration project, but 
to keep all the players um, as a part to contribute to go through this interesting and, and, and final decision or final uh, phase before we enter the market that is interesting and, and, and very necessary. Yeah. I'm just going to check in with the audience. Is there any questions over on the back? Uh, just a question. Uh, you mentioned that um, you've been, it sounds like, looking at uh, PEM fuel cells for the fuel cell portion of your combined heat power unit for roughly 10 years before you switched to solar dioxide. Can you maybe give us a, a bit more insight as to what was the main reasons or the main factor that made you change to solar dioxide fuel cell? Yeah. Yeah, we had a, a very good cooperation with uh, Black Power, um, based on the former times on a 4.6 kilowatt system, because we expected some synergies with their own development uh, for other industry applications. Um, the main reason why we decided for SOFC was that we believed that the first product should be as simple as possible. We had an experience um, in the field trial where we tested um, 30 systems in Europe based on low temperature PEM, um, which makes incredible problems um, with what treatment um, for the low temperature PEM. Um, this was one of the major issues which we decided we are not sure if we can really handle this problem in the, in the serial product. Another problem was um, that the, the gas treatment itself, as you probably know, is much more complex than with SFC. So we have in our current system based on SFC, we have a reformer which is something like, uh, I don't know, three, four centimeters in diameter and 20 centimeters long. That's a, that is all. So this is something to do with the philosophy of Weiland, which, which we think that it is important to provide a first product which is competitive with regards of efficiencies. So we are facing, a, I would say, electrical efficiency in the final serial product of nearly 40% which is more than 10% better than the best micro CHP system in that market, uh, one or two single family home uh, with the EcoPower One we have in the portfolio, which has 26. So this is competitive. We need a, this is the most important thing, we need a price competitive system. And this is the reason why we decided in this technology evaluation phase with it in 2008 to decide for the simpler, um, system which is certainly SOC was the challenge of material because we have a high temperature level there. So, as you said, one the system has advantages and disadvantages the other also. But um, the main reason was simplify the product, get away from water treatment, and we need start-stop capability. Was what which we have still on SOC as well. This was one precondition. We said to our partners, Sunfire, Staxera, we need a stack which can start and stop. And this can start and stop the stack, so we have all the requirements fulfilled. And this was the main reason why we decided for, for SFC. Any other questions from the audience? Hi, uh, Johnny Ring from Fuel Sound today. Can you comment on when your Enfield trial will start? Sorry, I didn't get you already. So. Uh, sorry, can you comment on when your Enfield trial might start? Ah, so might start, the Enfield trial, okay, yeah. In principle, we can build tomorrow the next system and provide it to Enfield, it's not a problem. We have a small um, uh, production site and production field in our headquarters in Rennscheid, uh, where we produce the systems, test the systems, and deliver to the customers with our normal uh, distribution organization. The challenge is at the moment, which I talked about previous, to develop the projects in the member states of Enfield. So we need time to find customers, to involve municipalities, uh, other utilities, to develop contracts, because in a field trial demonstration project, you need contracts, you cannot always sell a product, you need a contract, but this takes time. And some of our customers are still and I would say at the very beginning level of information, what micro CHP fuel cells in particular can provide for their business, for example. So you need to explain, you need a meeting, a second meeting, a third meeting. This takes time. So our plans at the moment um, does foresee that we install the first systems within Enfield in the first quarter of next year, 2014. 
We have 100 systems in Calux at the moment in Germany. This is a German project, as you probably know, and the field will start next year. Have a question over here. Uh, my name is Zakiul Kabir, Clear Edge Power, United States. I have a two-part question. Uh, first is, is your system heat load following? And the second question is, what type of durability do you predict with your SOFC stacks? Thank you. First question, yes, it's a heat following system, but we can also load following. So the normal operation mode is at the moment heat following. This is my, more or less 90% of the systems. We also, in the previous field trials, with, um, based on low temperature PEM, we developed a virtual fuel cell power plant, completely controlled by yeah, signals um, connected by ISDN or VPN connection, uh, and get price signals and load following signals, so we can also operate it um, um, load followed, not only heat followed. The second question, uh, um, reliability of the stack. At the moment, uh, we have results Calux from real installed, installed systems in private households. Um, we have stacks uh, more than 11,000 hours in operation, start and stop, 10 times a year at minimum. Um, we have 100% availability of some um, of those installations. The average rate at the moment is 96% availability. We expect a reliability of the stack of at minimum 40,000 hours. So our target, this is a target which I cannot confirm yet because we do not have that operation time at the moment. We do not want to have uh, a stack exchange uh, within $40,000. That is important because this has also something to do with the, um, the willing and the ability to um, for, for costs. So I think the 40000 is not a written document which is like a Bible. But um, it's depending on the cost. If we get the cost down of the stack, it's no problem to exchange the stack all three, four years. If the, stock, the stack is still on the cost level, which we have today, we have a problem. So at the moment, the path to market, I would say, is extend the stack lifetime as long as possible, as long as the costs are on that level we have. As soon as the price decreases of the costs, we can allow also uh, lower reliability times. If that it would be the reason, I don't know. So as a product manager, I always would say, never change the stack, that is fine. <laughs> but that's easy to say. We still have a, a minute if there's any further questions. Um, anybody at all? Uh, I have a further question for you. Okay. So we were talking about market and we're talking about these uh, additional uh, demonstration projects. I know we we're briefly uh, discussing market entry and uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I just want to know your, your timeline for actually bringing these units um, available for everybody and for sale. Um, we kind of briefly touched on that. I'm just wondering if there is an actual uh, time time frame that you're working for. Yeah, we have um, we have not defined a, a final launch date, and we will not communicate it because. Um, Byland is one of the well-known brands in the industry and um, the customer expects the best quality of a Byland product. So we will anyhow pre, um, yeah, deliver a product which fulfills the expectation of the customer, which is quality and costs. And um, we need certainly through the demonstration phase now, which I talked about the next two, three years, um, yeah, confirmation of the long-term reliability and degression of costs. And as soon as we have reached that and get the quality the customer expects and that the, the cost level which the customer expects, we will launch the product. But it's not that long ago, but we haven't uh, defined a launch date at the moment. Thank you. Well, this brings us to our end of our topic discussion today. So I would like to thank you for coming here on stage and thank talking you. with me. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Um,